Well, hi, and thanks so much for joining me here in my shop for another run at this uh, radio. In the last video, I believe I've sorted out what all these adjusting coils are, trimmer coils and capacitors are for. So I'm getting ready now to redo the alignment of the uh, broadcast band and the short wave bands, the uh, AM part of this radio. Uh, but before I do that, I want to take a little uh, poke, if you like, at the AVC voltages, the automatic volume or automatic level control uh, voltages that are developed in this radio. I put them on my uh, meter and uh, just see what they do. Now, a couple of you have been asking me about this for quite a few videos. What about the AVC? Well, let's find out today what's going on. We can look at both the, uh, the AM side and the FM side too. So I think the first thing we got to do is take a look at the schematic and get clear where the uh, ABC or automatic uh, biasing is coming from. So let me just flip over here. Okay, so here's the schematic and uh, the tube we're interested in is, let's see, front end tube, mixer tube, uh, IF tube, detector tube right here. So this is the one we want to focus in on. Let's let's do that. We'll zoom up here. Okay. Now get it right in the middle of the screen. So this tube is doing two basic jobs and doing three or four different things with those two basic jobs. So one basic job is to amplify the audio signal that's being developed in this tube and send it on its way. Uh, to the audio amplifier and that would be coming down coming coming down it says having spoken too soon on hey how's the how's the audio get out of here so the audio is coming out this way So the thing about this tube, like a lot of these tubes, has two diodes and different radio designers do different things with these diodes. In many cases, the two diodes are just connected together into basically one diode and that's it. But in this case, the two diodes are separate and doing two different things. So uh, uh, these are just rectifying the signal coming out of the IF here. So it's developing a DC voltage. It's going to come down through this rather large resistor here and look it goes up feeds the grid uh, so and comes down here feeds a control voltage to the grid here so uh, does it go any further I don't think so nope that's the end of the line so a DC voltage being developed here based on the strength of the IF signal coming out of the IF uh, is fed to the grid of this tube, the IF tube to control the gain of it, and also likewise to the grid of the uh, uh, mixer tube. And I guess it also controls the gain. This is the signal coming in from the antenna. So problems with this could potentially weaken the radio. Remember the basic problem with this radio is that it's, it's weak in both AM and FM. So you know this tube could be implicated maybe the grid voltage is off the whole time we'll find out during this test now if we go the other way the other diode come down here you can see the audio is picked off eventually fed into this mess of switches and works its way out in a mono form to the left and right channel out here somehow somehow through all these switches it also because of the DC voltage is supplied through a large resistor to the grid of the magic eye tube here. You can see that this is also a complicated magic eye. This is actually two tubes in one. You can see the two plates up here. And one side of it is your classic magic eye, how strong is the signal type magic eye uh, level meter sort of operation. And the other one is an on and off stereo I believe this is the stereo indicator here I'm not quite sure of that I think so this grid is fed from a, a, a some kind of rectified 
signal coming coming out of the FM detector. And we won't worry about this side. We won't worry about this eye at all right now. Really what we're interested in is what is coming out of here. What's going this way and what's going that way. Okay, so now we understand the circuits here. Where can we test? Well, a good place to test has got to be right, right on the tube pins here. We can look at the uh, variation of the voltage on pin 7, and I believe this must be pin 8 here. It's a little hard to see. Pin 7 and 8. And we'll start with 7. Pin 7. Well, we'll start with whatever one we want. You know what? Let's get to it. 7 and 8. Just pin 7 and 8 of the EVF89. Pin 7 and 8. Okay, let's look at the radio here. Okay, so the uh, EBF89 I, I, I didn't finish my sentence there, did I? <laughs> Just yeah, I don't want to get this wrong. So that's the EBF89 that I'm pointing at right here. That's it there. This radio's not on yet. So, pins 7 and 8 are these two over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and 9. 7 and 8. So here they are. So they're pretty easy to get to. Now let's just uh, you can see I made a little rearrangement in my shop here, which I'm trying out for the first time. I put a meter over here where it's easier to use, easier to see, easier to get on camera. We'll see if it's if it really works out. So with this meter we're going to try to measure that potential. I'll put down on 15 volts to start with. Take a clip lead. Take an older clip. Probably going to want to clip on. And once I've poked, I'm going to want to clip on. So we're, we're ready to do that. So we can monitor it steadily. In fact, I may eventually want to put uh, both those diodes on two meters at the same time. And watch each one of them. I think uh, I think we're ready to start up the radio. I've got the signal generator roaring along here, at just under just under 10 megahertz. We're on the broadcast band, so let's get this down into the right range here. Okay, so it's now putting out a, a uh, moderately strong signal on the stronger side of moderate. Uh, where's it putting it to? Okay, it's going right into the antenna via this connection. As I don't have the ground connected, but I doubt it's going to make any difference I, I, I do want kind of a weak signal okay this is my cooling fan deal here so I'm gonna switch on okay fans turning we're all set here Double checking a few things just to be sure. The FM antenna is not plugged in. Uh, let's see, the sound is being fed. If you hear anything from the radio, it's coming through a speaker and into the microphone up here. Just come on, let's hear something. So, here we come. So you can kind of watch my hand, and get an idea how far up I'm turning the volume. That's that's a little less than halfway. Not a lot of volume there. Okay, no signal at the moment, so we're going to check the voltage right now and make sure the meter is working and all that kind of stuff. Now, notice these two here. One, and here's the other. So 
I'm on the 1.5 volt now. The meter's gotten a little more sensitive. We're actually looking for negative voltages here. The, the meter should actually go the wrong way. There it goes the wrong way. And the other one, the wrong way. Now it's going to go the right way. I'm going to take it. I mean, it's not much of a reading here to take, but let me try it. So that's a tiny portion of one volt. It's like a tenth of a volt. Very similar, tenth of a volt. Slightly more in one of them, but that doesn't really tell me anything important. Now we're going to tune something in here. I think I'm going to set up the clip lead now. Now according to the schematic, it was uh, which one? Which one was it? That it was number seven that's acting as the uh, actual uh, automatic volume control. So let's watch that one, number seven. So I'm affecting the radio a little bit here. Here and affect the radio. So, but what what could be happening is, as I hook up my meter, I'm actually affecting the voltage I'm trying to read. Even though this is a VTVM, uh, at least a megaohm input on it, it may still be enough. To these are fairly high impedance circuits. I'm trying to get on the low impedance side. I'm, I'm right up against the diode. In fact, it doesn't get any lower than that. So. This is what it has to offer. So, a slightly diminished voltage, perhaps. Uh, let's tune something in and see what happens here. You can see a little bit of AVC action in the meter. Good. Now, let's get something with a little more. I'm doing this using the external antenna. Can oh, huh. Wow, is that this radio or is that something in the shop doing that? It's it's only in one tuning area. This is what we picked up on the short wave yesterday that freaked me right out. How am I supposed to know? Is this the radio? Uh, let's mess around with the antenna. It's coming in on the antenna. I, th I think it's something in the shop here. What could it be? I'm going to put the uh, signal generator ground on, and that might that might silence things. Yeah. Okay. So all I basically basically done there is shorted the antenna out, and that's why things got quiet. But now we'll feed in the signal generator signal. Well, it's there. I should be able to tune it. Double check. It's definitely it. I'll put a tone on. <coughs> volume down. So the volume that volume is about halfway and the signal I'm feeding in is quite strong. Uh, we should really be having a, a really strong result here. You know what? I'm on. I'm still on. Son of a gun. Hang on.
it was not on full power. This will change the. Uh, this will change things. <laughs> Look at my meter go up here. Okay, so now the more when I turn the volume up, I can hear it in the speakers. Very good. So we've got an ABC voltage now of about two and a half volts. Uh, it varies from radio to radio, but it's quite common for ABC voltages to get as high as 10 volts, 15 volts, or to run as low as two or three. I mean, they're all over the place. All depends on the radio, the tubes, the designer, all that stuff. So we can't know for sure if we got a problem here. Uh, let's tune off to a dead spot here. Measure this voltage. So this is the zero. How is that ever quiet? That's full up. So I'm seeing that the voltage is not changing, it's sitting steady, even though I'm crossing, crossing things. Doesn't seem quite right to me. Um, it almost seems like something is, is, is holding it up. It's, it's, it's possible too that it's designed to reach only a certain negative voltage. This would be around one, about a half a volt negative right now. And I don't think I can do anything to make it go lower. Just higher. Now that, that's a signal generator. So I mean, you do expect a certain amount of negative. Let's do this. Let's tune in the signal generator, then turn down its output until that meter gets back to where it was. It didn't take much. Okay, so I still see a little bit of action there. A little lower. This is quite a bit lower. Okay, so this signal is not causing any... I mean the noise is a lot louder. The noise isn't lifting the AVC either. Okay, that's on one side. That's what's going on on one side. Now we'll check. That's what's going on on one diode. Now we'll check the other diode. Kind of repeat all this. Yeah, I should have had two meters going. Better, better listen. So this is where the audio is derived. And you can hear quite a hum in there. Of course, got the volume right up full. The hum is probably being introduced by the meter, frankly. That's probably where that's coming from. Kind of the buzzy hum. Turn it down. And uh, I'm going to tune in the... Wow, this has just drained the life out of the radio. I'm watching for action here. Once again, because I've, I've put this meter on, I've, I've put a load onto the circuit, and it's, it's, I think it's drawing the life out of it. Uh, next move is a different meter. Kind of sad to revert to this, but I have to at this point. Ordinary digital meter. Disconnect. So all that was knocked out of there. So this guy's input impedance, uh, I think, it doesn't actually say. Uh, but I think it's 10, 10 megohms. 
could be ten, ten times what the other meter was. Okay, that'll stay there. There we go, one diode. And the other. I just completely knocked the radio right out. Okay, let's and the other one. Kind of a similar voltage under this test. So now, one of the ways you can spot if your meter is draining a charge out of a circuit, when you first touch it, there's enough charge and pressure there, voltage there, to drive the meter up to a high reading, and then it will fall back. That's a little tricky with a digital meter. Let's see if we don't get a big high reading for a moment. Big high being two volts or something. Okay, gotta watch the meter. I didn't see anything there. Let's try the other one. Nothing there. But I, I don't think we're getting true true readings here. But definitely the diodes are doing something. Uh, they're working. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, it's not. It's not like the uh, ABC is being pushed positive or anything like that is happening. It's writing a little bit negative. Probably just fine. Probably all is good. So we can use the ABC to do the alignment. That's also possible too. Especially the one with the audio on the audio side, since it has no effect back on the rest of the radio. The only thing about using ABC to do this is you have to have enough signal going in to trigger the ABC. And then that in itself, when the ABC is operating and the radio sensitivity is going up and down, makes it quite tricky to try to align a radio. You have to pay very close attention under those conditions. So that's why some, in some cases the instructions are going to say, listen to the speaker, put a meter on the speaker, turn the volume up full, cover your ears. And uh, others, uh, another technique is to do what we're doing here. So uh, why not keep doing what we're doing here? Let's see. We're just about ready to actually actually undertake the alignment. Let's do it. Okay, AM alignment time. Um, first step is to check the uh, oscillator. I can't read any instructions. I gotta make them up now. I determined the oscillator was this and this. Coil at the low end. So we're gonna go down to the low end of the AM band here. Oh my gosh. What do you think that is? Uh, let's, let's, let's just try a couple of eliminations here. Is it a light? Is it this? Is it this? How about my counter? Not much else is on in here. Uh, so I'm going to interrupt the power to the radio and listen to it as it dies out to hear if the clicking changes dramatically in the last fraction of a second here. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll just go to a lower voltage. I'll just put on the dim lights, see if it changes. So other than getting quiet, I don't think it changed. That really suggests to me it's not coming from the radio. What in heck? What the heck? <laughs> well, it's just a mysterious noise in the shop. 
We'll escape the noise a little bit. And we'll tune to exactly six, 600 kilohertz. Okay, we'll tune this guy here. the uh, IF. Wow, it's right on the money. 600, dead on. Okay, so we'll go up to the other end of the band. This is 1400. Pretty much dead on 1400. Excellent. So, next thing is the sensitivity. Adjust the sensitivity. We want to adjust AM, AM coil and the capacitor. So, we go to low end to do the coil. Oh, this is a Maybe this is. Uh, oh, I also have the loop antenna mystery that I never did finish with, which I think is these two guys. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll get to them later. Let's continue with what we know. We know. We think we know. Anyway, coil, capacitor. Go down to the low end. Maybe this is why this radio is a little quiet on the low end. Back down to 600. Okay, now we want to watch. Let me go back to the indicating meter. That's the guy up there. We want to be on eight, the one that's driving the audio forward, not affecting the circuits behind. go now we should see this go up and down a little more volume so we can kind of hear hear it very nice curve seems that's maximum there it's right on 600 so now we adjust this coil give a metal screwdriver a shot here, but I think it's going to throw it off. Nope. Okay, watching the meter. Oh my god, it's just nothing. Okay, let's fiddle with the capacitor here. Son of a gun, there isn't there isn't the slightest change in that meter. So have I already messed up? Did I mess up? Too much signal being fed in? Like, no, no, this, this meter would be way up higher. <sighs> OK, 
Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe these are for the antenna, the loop antenna. Maybe I got this mixed up. These big coils have just been screaming AM radio at me the whole time. that slug moved while I was doing that. I think the slug didn't move at all. Let me get the camera going. Oh, son of a gun, what was that? Probably the... Yeah, probably just... Because I'm on the audio circuit here, little bits of this and that come out the speaker. Scare me. <laughs> it's good to be scared. Okay. Not so scared. Let's change cameras here. We're gonna find another slug issue here that's just gonna so that's the slug. See it's just just below the top. Now am I seeing things? Not turning it. That's why it's not going anywhere. Okay, I'll try my oh so nifty handmade tool here. You know what? The slug is turning now, but it was stuck. Oh, where is it turning? Yeah, it's definitely turning now. Okay, now I gotta watch that meter. Oh my gosh. What does this mean? I've been trying to turn slugs and not been turning them. It's still kind of hit and miss there, isn't it? Oh. This has definitely got it. Okay, let's not fool with it too much. Now, maybe the same thing was happening with this one. I fooled myself. That slug is just as loose as can be in there. Okay, watching the meter. This is the one that should... Nothing happening at all. Okay, now maybe, maybe, maybe my meter was just sitting here. Maybe it's riding at the bottom. We notice it takes a certain amount of signal to get this meter to come up. So maybe it's just sitting on the bottom of the bottom of the ocean, so to speak, and I, I'm not lifting it up enough to get it off the bottom. So let me put a little more signal into this. Make sure it's off the bottom. Now drop it. Oh no, it was held up. Okay, so okay, so that's definitely not the problem. We are floating above the bottom here. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, okay, now we're gonna switch. I don't know what the heck is going on. Let's switch to the other antenna. Now, what I should want to do We're on the loop antenna up here. Okay, so that, that's me squeezing the antenna, just making sure there's some relationship between the antenna and the radio. I'll turn up the signal here. I should be able to pick it up. Touch that. That's 
me bumping this black clip lead. More power. Oh my gosh, we're not hearing it? Well, that's, that's quite a strong signal. So I'm going to put the uh, signal generator antenna. That's kind of interesting. That was probably a momentary disconnection of this clip lead. I thought I heard the signal generator come jumping out. Okay, we're getting there. So I think that's a very, very weak uh, reception for what I've got set up here. I've got a strong signal coming out of the signal generator fed into the ether of my shop. i got a loop antenna just sitting inches away, and I have to turn this way up. So again, weakness indicated. Uh, let's see if we can make it weaker. Let's make it weaker. i got to hook this meter back up. Okay, so we're watching the meter here. Tune in for max. That's a radio station right there. That'd be 590 probably. Okay, so that's tuned dead on. It's right on 600 on the scale. Can we lift it higher? Okay, so I think this is... Wow. Oh, yeah, it's coming up. Slug's almost out. We'll go to the, the other end. Actually, let's, let's turn this capacitor just to see how sensitive things are here. So it makes almost no, no difference. A little bit. Okay, now we'll go to the other end of the band here. Fourteen. Let's just get a quieter spot. Okay, right here. Tune it in for a maximum meter. Fourteen twenty. Yeah, you know what? That would match. Fourteen twenty on the dial. Perfect. Capacitor for maximum. Okay, much more sensitive. Maximum's right here. So, now what am I tuning? Am I tuning the antenna? Is that what this has been about? Or have I been tuning the front end of this radio? I'm going to switch back, I'm going to switch off the loop antenna. And, uh, <coughs> I'm 
Let's see what happens here. Oops. There we are. Okay, so we're off the loop antenna even though I pushed way too many buttons. Notice the volume has been left where it is. No signal is audible. This is the antenna. Okay, so what's the story now? Is, is, is the radio tuned? Is that why it's not hearing anything? Okay, that's a direct connection of the antennas. Sounds like it hasn't retuned. Okay, let's uh, Okay, so those are loosely coupled. Tune the radio for maximum. Pretty much where it was. Now. So are these the coils that have now been brought to life? These two adjustments rather? The ones that have never shown up on my radar before? Could be, you know. We're at the high end, so it would be the capacitor. Watching the meter. Okay, that's out to max. Now we'll head back to the other end of the band. So that's what it is. So I should complete my, my diagram here, my, my diagram before I forget. So this becomes loop. And this becomes wire. AM broadcast. Good. Good show. Pretty quiet down here. That's right around six. be the coil to maximize it. Okay, we're going back to the other end now to see what happened with the uh, other end of the band. You can hear the radio's coming to life, right? 14. Okay, tune her in for max. Too much noise there. Let's let's go over here. Tune it in for maximum reading on the meter. Capacitor, it's at its limit. Let's hope we can turn it down and get a peak. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna go back. This radio was way out of alignment, probably because of all the messing around I did. I probably my oh for certainly, certainly my initial attempt at aligning this radio just threw it totally out. I don't think there's any doubt of that. Ok, 
Okay, tuned for max. Adjust the coil. Here the screwdriver is having a small effect there. About the same, no difference. Just in case, I'm going to do a. Let's try it with the plastic for a minute. Maybe I can get away with this for the final adjustment. Ah, that's it. Good. Good show, I think. Let's find out. Let's find out. So we'll. Uh, Turn that guy down. We'll start at the bottom of the AM band. We're going to go with first with a wire antenna. Wire antenna. But, uh, oh, right. It's over here. So this is our current wire antenna. Is that red, red wire you see hanging there? That's just not quite enough. Basically, you know what it actually is? It's actually the speaker wire for a Nordmendi or European style radio. <laughs> that's, that's what I use for my my throw antenna here. I'm not gonna throw it. There it goes. I'm gonna hook it up. Not with this. I'm an unreliable cord. Once again, shame. I'm, I'm so shameful. I think I could find a few minutes to uh, fix all my uh, leads here. But, you know, it just boils down to me having better things to do than solder clip leads, but shame on me. Okay. Turn this around. There we go. Definitely hear that make a connection. So now I have a lousy wire antenna. What do we get with a lousy wire antenna? You know what else I can do? Yeah, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to try to put a camera on the dial, but I'm not going to bother. Here we go. say wow that's really disappointing but in fact that's not disappointing that's typical of what a radio gets from a piece of wire in my shop we'll flip on the loop antenna now and hopefully we get a dramatic difference here so we're off the wire let me prove that I'm going to disconnect the wire here okay made no difference so we're definitely off the wire wire having no influence all loop all loop antenna we're at the high end, we're going to work our way down. This is also a, a steerable antenna, directional antenna, but the radio is on its back. So. Okay, so start picking stuff up now. Yeah. 
Ramsey is trying to check it out. Chopper traffic right with Richard Martin. Richard, how does Rose look? Not good at all, Matt. We've still got a lot of issues on the go. We've just had a couple okay. of Antenna right direction. Now for the DVP. Southbound approaching Don Mills. A crash. The left lane is blocked. On the northbound side approaching Baby Bloor, a stalled vehicle sitting in the left lane. On the Gardner eastbound approaching Grand Avenue, a crash. The left lane is blocked. The police are on scene. Still problems on the go for the 401 eastbound collectors at Weston Road, a crash block in two right lanes. The 427 southbound collectors at Dundas, a crash in the right lane. Some improvement for the 400 at least. Uh, they're not blocking wide lanes on the northbound 400, uh, approaching steals anymore. To the northbound 400, that is still blocked. But they are still continuing to clean up, but at least the live lanes on the northbound 400 are cleared up. Uh, in town, we still have a closure south, uh, St. Clair at Danforth Road. Tuning on. Closed in all directions. People talking in Boston. Boston Sports Radio, or Philadelphia, etc. But if I kind of went around the Eastern Conference, even right now, and just say LeBron James is no longer on the Cavaliers, I'm talking about no other deals being made, no other teams improving it, they're just dealing with, you know, also, rotating the whole radio would, would be much more helpful. Okay, let's just go one more. Let me get one more station here. That's okay, though. That is okay. That is really okay. Oh, this is the first time working on this radio, uh, doing this kind of thing, doing an alignment, where I feel like I actually succeeded. Uh, all previous things I've done with this radio in terms of alignment, although I may not have said it clearly on the video, I at the end of the process, I said to myself, well, that didn't work. I'll we'll have to do that again later. Now, I realize from experience and I think you really have to get comfortable with this in this line of work that you're approaching a radio you're not familiar with you're reading a schematic you're not familiar with in my case it's not even in English for crying out loud so the fact is you're going to revisit things over and over and over and every time you do an iteration you're going to pick up a little more you're going to correct the things you didn't figure out first time or the things you got wrong the observations you missed whatever it is it's an iterative process and you got to be comfortable with it so watching my video is a little bit iterative too because you've seen me align the radio more than once uh, and, and just totally expected for me uh, and not disappointed at the start of working on a radio like this to have things just not work out I keep myself calm and I understand that I'm paying the price to get educated there's always a cost to education one way or another pay a price to get educated so anyway hey I'm feeling pretty good now I, I got all these coils figured out and uh, wonderful I got the AM band working really great uh, let's see what's left is the two short wave bands I think they're gonna come right up right away as soon as I uh, make these adjustments appropriately and we're gonna find that the AM side of this radio is working great and that's the end of that and then we're back to the FM side and to try to do something to pick up the FM signal and uh, get it to, to clean up a little more than what it is now. Okay, that's great. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I'm heading out for another beautiful day outside. It's going to be cool, partly sunny, and uh, I'm afraid there's more yard work waiting for me out there. <laughs> so, see you, uh, see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.